Let me know when you see it. Loading. What is that? These are MFDs. You got a whole bunch of different ones. Oh my god. HSI. Okay, that's that must not be done yet. Nav, GPS. Ooh. I think this works with one of the mod one of the one of the nav sat mods or something. This yeah, it doesn't look like it's doing anything there. Jesus, is this a big mod or this comes default? Uh, I think with the new B9 update, this stuff, all this stuff is uh, included here. But So I got a screen here. This is like a really enhanced nav ball. You got all sorts of stuff on it and uh, just a little more clean. And uh, then you have this thing here, which is essentially like the HUD in a, uh, a DCS aircraft, kind of like the A-10 HUD. And you got uh, speed on the left, altitude on the right, sort of thing. And then you have that, you know, vertical velocity indicator. Obviously, that's totally fucked at the moment because I'm stationary. Then you have uh, orbital information here. Um, obviously, all that is showing as NAN or NAN is, well, I don't know what it stands for, but I'm stationary at the moment, so there's not going to be any data on that. And then uh, that's that's what the uh, that's what kind of the default screen is. This seat back here, it's the third dude, and he's just like back right in the cockpit sort of thing. And so this is the aircraft. Keep in mind, I'm slightly delayed. Yeah, no worries. This is the aircraft. This is very big. Jesus, dude. Very this large. Looks so much different than when. I played. Those are big cargo bays, yes. So like oh uh, this little fuselage in here is like the size of a normal fuselage would be for maybe one of the B9 type fuselage aircraft and that'll fit inside one of these no problem. So basically what I want to try to do is uh, do a sort of like space plane only type thing where I can build build a uh, space station entirely using this this plane and uh, so this is the business end okay. back here hey I'm streaming check out my aircraft can, can you put like a can you put like a that can arm in there or something like the for the space oh the, the arm. Uh, oh, what's that there is a mod arm? for it but it's yeah. not the greatest no it's okay so I could put something like that would, in there and it would fit and work well, maybe. I don't know if it works with the latest updated and stuff. Do you have my well, channel, the, Grimes? The thing with that is, is there's, there's like torque. Yeah, I can see the stream. And it's okay. just a plain DCS world. Well, but, um, well, well. Yeah, like my understanding is like if you use the Canada arm or um, make your own thing with um, Inferno Robotics or whichever one they have now, mm -hmm. it uh, it doesn't really... It, the way like it, everything kind of torques... When you try to actually grab onto something, it doesn't really work. Okay. So yeah, um, the business end back here on uh, the engines. These looking things in here, they're actually nuclear reactors. And uh, this here is a gigantic electric uh, generator that gets powered from this big reactor here. This big main engine here is the uh, fusion inertial fusion engine that gets powered off of electricity and a very little bit uh, just a minute amount of uh, liquid fuel and then also uh, stored inside of the engine is uh, liquid deuterium and liquid tritium and then these two smaller engines are thermal turbojets that basically uh, take the heat generated from the the uh, uh, reactor there and transfer it into the uh, turbojet and the turbojet can run off of just atmosphere atmosphere or it can use 
liquid uh, fuel. There's a whole bunch of different modes that they can choose. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then, uh, and then just as extra thrust, if I need, if I need to just get out of somewhere quick and decide to burn a lot of fuel quickly, I can use uh, just these regular engines here. And then these things here, these are radiators. I have a lot of spoilers or air brakes. Um, I can cycle in between. Basically, the just the four air brakes. That's for just regular air brake use, and then all 80 billion air brakes is for slowing down on the runway or something like that. Um, so yeah, all right, I'm gonna friggin'. So, so is this thing detachable at all, or once it's in space, it just kind of yeah, it almost looks like the whole bottom wingspan could come off once you're in space. Nope, that is a kind of an interesting idea though. But uh, no, I this is essentially a all a space plane at heart. Um, my other space plane you've probably seen, it looks a lot like this, but only it's different on the on the front. It has uh, two uh, uh, ca uh, passenger cabin type things and a different type of cockpit. So basically what I do is uh, this main fusion engine here puts out a lot of radiation and it will immediately kill Kerbals within like uh, 15 kilometers. So I never use it on takeoff. And then I only use the rocket engines on the the outside there for uh, you know quick bursts of uh, speed. Wait, wait. So your engine kills people? Yes. It can. It can. But if they're inside the aircraft, they're shielded from it. So. Okay. So the takeoff roll on just using the uh, the uh, thermal turbojets is kind of long, but. I've never f had a cockpit that I can actually see out the front business end. That's pretty cool. So, getting Some towards rotation or? speed. Yep. Oh yeah. I would never fly without a joystick. Bring the gear up. Flaps up one notch. It's important with. One of the mods I have installed, which is FAR, or Ferrum Aerospace Research, it's extremely important that, that I keep my speed low in the thick part of the atmosphere, because if I go too fast, you'll have kind of high dynamic pressure on the wings, and... Uh, and they'll break. Just, yeah, they'll just... if you Well, they won't break if you're staying at a near zero angle of attack, but as soon as you pull any kind of Gs whatsoever and get a higher angle of attack, uh, yeah, your shit's gone. So this is the FAR uh, flight systems kind of window up here on the left, and you can see my Mach number um, and the density uh, of the kind of atmosphere. Uh, obviously, it's more dense the lower you are. So I'm going 0.38 Mach right now. It's just in a steady climb, and that's that's fairly quick. There's some jets out there that this is what this is what they cruise at. I mean, kind of crazy. So I'll kind of get turned around here and come bring it back in for a landing. But yeah, this is this is what it looks like. Freaking beast. Those intakes down there. And You're not going to bring it to space? Bring it to space. You want me to go to space? All right, I'll go to space. Go to space. Stick I've, with space. I've never been to space in this yet, but I will go to space. Yes. I guess it's kind of a, if it's if it you know works it ain't broken sort of thing with the uh, overall design because you've seen you using the business end of that for quite a bit now yeah well, it's just you got to be so careful with it I mean if you if you pull any sort of G's whatsoever and I could uh, I could s airspeed settings oh this is well this is nice Oh, that's meters a second, okay. Oh, knots. <gasps> that's fucking cool. It's about time they did something like that. Mach. 0.69 Mach already. Indicated airspeed, 313 knots. 312 knots. Meters a second. That's uh, miles per hour. Oh, this is great. This is cool. 
It's very nice. Very helpful stuff. I don't actually know where that's changing. Uh, I'll move the nav ball down here. Um, oh, nice. Okay. Let's see if I can use my laptop to log into Twitch T board and change the uh, name of the tr of my stream here. All right, I'm getting to about 7,000 meters. I'm going to slow my ascent and uh, just get some speed. Keep it around 10 degrees. Well, there, I saved, I saved the uh, title of my stream. Hopefully it took when it, when it actually saves on my crap. Yeah, I just, anyone watching has to uh, test fly the Albatross. Uh, that'll, the title will change. Um, the game playing won't change until people refresh the stream, but that's okay. Anyone new will see the uh, KSP. Yeah. So, one of these days I need to do, like, a mission entirely from the cockpit here. That's, that would be fucking sweet. I can't zoom Jump in. on in while you enter space. What? Jump into the cockpit while you enter space. <laughs> it's just nothing. Yeah. You need a seat adjustment. There is actually a track IR mod that uh, works, but you can't really use it very well outside of the aircraft because it's, I don't know, it's junk. It's weird, but in as a first person view, it's amazing. It's just like, you know, you're in the A-10 or whatever. Buffeting. Ascents with space planes take forever. Yeah, I just gotta go gradual. Well, Dad, burning, and he's like, got the. No fuel. Yeah, he's got the hacks engines that are like crazy OP. This is gonna... I'm going to have problems on my ascent here because... Because I uh, copied the back portion, well, I, I forgot to set up the, uh, the command on these engines to switch modes. So... Uh, this will be interesting. You will run out of fuel. No, I won't. Just... I won't run out of fuel. I won't. I probably won't be able to click fast enough to switch this one, and then switch over to clicking on the right engine. Because then, as soon as I click one to switch modes, the thrust is going to drop off considerably, and then it'll have asymmetric thrust. And yeah, it's going to have to cut power basically. Yeah. Yeah, cut your power now and switch them. No, not yet. Let's throw the nuke on while you do it. I'm going to just go ahead and throw the uh, the fusion engine on. It's a little tiny flame. It's kind of funny. You have that much power coming from such a tiny flame. But it's punching out uh, 1,100 kilonewtons of thrust right now. <laughs> One thing you gotta really be aware of with the Interstellar mod is uh, as soon as you get into space, the atmosphere, you know, obviously is gone, and the heat transfer of the radiators is gonna be nil. So you have to deploy the radiators, and they kind of look like solar panels a little bit. But I 
You must not overheat your engines. Ah, Mac Jeb won't let me do that. See up here where the atmosphere is really thin, you can pull crazy angles of attack and it'll let you because the density is nil. Yeah, you have like zero resistance. But there still can be some drag, so got to be careful a little bit with that. All right. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. LFO. LFO, and we're back. Now we're going to use up a lot of fuel. Switch the fusion engines to uh, rocket mode, essentially. Apoapsis is only just 30 kilometers, one kilometer more than what I'm at. Got to really start just, getting uh, up that speed. Leave enough fuel to come back. Oh, yeah, I think. I'm only using up eight oxidizer and eight liquid fuel per second, so I have sixty-four hundred liquid fuel and seventy-eight hundred oxidizer. How's that all stored? Um, in in the aft portion of the fuselage. Oh, okay. And also, well, yeah, pretty much that's it. This aircraft isn't necessarily completely meant for deep space travel, but uh, it probably could. Fuck it. Time for some KW rockets. Now we're really putting out some flames. that sound. Wait, can you take something to Jewel once, or is that the other space point you had? Like can about I, 30 different work? versions of? Did you take one of these things as Jewel, or was that the other space point you built 30 different versions of? Um, and this thing here, I've never, I haven't, haven't taken this thing to space yet. Is it, is it, well, what the fuck? No, I mean, it was just kind of like the Spectre for the most part. Just oh, the Spectre? Deeper. Yeah, I took that thing to Lathe. Why did these just cut out? Fuel flows not. Yeah, the fuel flow for some reason. I, I need to put up a. Uh, shit, shit, shit. I need to put in a uh, fuel hose from the main fuselage to that fuselage. I have one going from this fuselage in, but I guess. Well, whatever. Ooh, Apoapsis 80 kilometers, essentially in space. 90 kilometers. Hold it there. Ah, fuck it, we'll go to 100. There. Now we will transfer fuel from the main fuselage back in. to the side tanks here. I see Great, the, I see these main... Stream. What? You should mod me. Mod you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? Oh, why not? I, ma I made the clicky. This might be abuse of power. No. Um... Now I need to put some uh, fuel in there. 
I clicked off you, but it didn't, uh, it might take a while. I have no idea. It looks like these radiators are getting red hot right now. That's kind of fucking cool. Oh, I should probably, uh, plan my circularization burn here. Oh, looks like we got a, got some time. Time to deploy the radiators. Do I have that still set up? Well, of course, one side goes. Stupid. There. That should be better. Get pointed towards my maneuver node here. How are things looking inside? Ooh, pretty. Oh wow, the stick moves. Whee! That's cool. Yeah, I freaking love that cockpit. Yeah, it's so nice. This guy, like the guy in the back, it's kind of like a um, the radio guy on old airliners. Since in back back off to the side. Yeah, the navigator. It's really hard to see if I'm pointing towards that maneuver node. I think I, I think I am. Oh wow! Even the SAS moves the stick. That's bloody brilliant. What's that say? Important papers and crosswords. Oh shoot, how much time till my maneuver node? Burn in 14.2 seconds. What? That was wrong. Wow, look at that. That's freaking... Those radiators are red hot. Wow. That's kind of scary. It's much heat. Much heat, very wow. Don't you have like three nuclear reactors on that? Yeah. Was yeah. one not enough? No, not to run the... Each thermal turbojet has to be connected directly to one, essentially. Alright. Note to self. Put lights on the aircraft. I have some landing lights, but they face the runway, not the, not the aircraft. So everything's all dark. And red. And red. Probably don't need the those those engines there. It'll be a very quick burn for circularization. Should I come back into the atmosphere and see if I survive? After after I circularize and wait a, wait a day or two to uh, get KSC back on the light side? Or should I go to bed? Jesus wow. Christ, it's almost midnight. Ah... Uh. Boom. We've achieved orbit. Quick save. Well, congratulations, comrade. Time to time accelerate. 
hand. I can barely tell where KSC is. It's right in there. Okay. The KSC is just... Oh, this is going to take forever. Perhaps I should quick save. Go to the space center. And time compress that way. Yes, good morning, KSC. That's not your plane, is it? What? That's orbiting right now? Yep. I pretty much had to start a oh. new save. Because with the new latest B9 update, I had to remake one of my planes, and the old planes wouldn't work anymore, and it was causing the game oh. to... Uh, Fuck make up a poop. and yes, make very large poop. Yes. All right, time to plan out my descend maneuver. Time I get over there, KSC will probably be right around there. Point to the maneuver node. All right, time compressed to 20 minutes. What was that thing with the node you want to burn if it's 20 seconds? Oh no, wait, if it's a burn time... Ah, uh, never mind. I know what it is. How come you don't have a burn time? Uh, it is, uh... It's, yeah, it's estimated. You have to fire the engines off a little bit, so it actually can calculate kind of what your oh, thrust okay. is, and it's probably not going to be exact, because it might not know how to figure out the fusion engine. So, right. So, right. Okay. As I have my engines going, it's calculated it. Uh, oh, I only, I only need to burn for about fourteen seconds. So, at that current thrust, anyway. Well, no. I suppose it would. That's calculating full thrust. So I can time accelerate just a little bit more. Call it good around there. Do about half. Watch as we go here. I'm gonna actually call it good right about right about there. The KSC is right about here. Overshoot just a little bit and the Kerbin will turn under me and I will catch up to Kerbal Space Center. Now we'll just flip over and get in line with our velocity vector. Ooh, Here's the question. Does she break apart on entry? Yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, she does? Oh, I have no idea. That is a good question. 
Uh, it can. It can, yeah. Mm-hmm. Will it? Since you haven't tested it yet. Pr- probably. That, that, you're going to lose wings. Yeah, it'll be entertaining. And I forgot to put parachutes and all that business. Oh, God. It's a good way to figure out your mistakes. Keep these filled because these are the most, relatively most aft tanks. All right. Time to bring in the uh, radiators. Hopefully our waste heat doesn't skyrocket too quickly. If it ever looks like my angle of attack is getting is going to get too high, I'll just pop my first set of spoilers there or air brakes, and hopefully that'll bring it back down. And if it gets really bad, I can pop them all. Suppose I'll just time accelerate until I get closer to the atmosphere. There we go. Nose down here. All right, how's the map looking here? Looks like I'm over going to overshoot pretty far, so I'll just go ahead and start with uh, my first set Looks of. Like your kerbals are going to throw up. Yeah, the camera's shaking pretty good. Haven't reached the atmosphere, I guess, yet. When you start to see fire, it's probably, uh, Good indicator. Yeah. Man, Poor Bill, Jeb, and Bob, knowing full well that they don't have the parachutes to uh, bring them back down to safety. It's all, it all rests on Jeb's shoulders. I always install the game, play, and then like, oh. I'm bored, and then stop playing, and like, damn, I really want to play. So I play a bit. You know. I think everyone's probably like that. Ever have any interest of, uh, playing Gay Side 2 again? Uh... Or did you ever play that? Did you ever play Side 2? Did... I bought much money in that game, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. With you peoples, and I had the big liberator as well. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. I haven't played in a long time, though. I'm probably like 20 gigs down on patches. Probably. Let me go a bit of a negative angle of attack here and see if I can get my path closer to KSC. Is it any good? Oh, it's as frustrating as ever. Mm-hmm. I sense that if you pop all spoilers, something is going to break. Mm, well, they're all popped now, but my density, the the uh, atmosphere density is still too low for it to really even matter. So basically, you can leave them popped way up high and slow down, you know, most efficiently being up high but as soon as you enter yeah geez there's the 
I'm gonna way overshoot. It's okay, you have a plane. This is true. Which I should probably switch these back to atmospheric. Intake air. And now I must not throttle up whatsoever or else they'll explode. Oh, what? crap. Yeah, because right now they're in intake air mode. So if I throttle them up, the thermal, ter the thermal, or the all the heat will just not know what to do because right, there's, there's, no, there's, no yeah, air. there's no air to cool it down and whatever. So they'll just blow up. Going in the air. You're doing Mach 6 on entry. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Getting some reentry effects now. I'm going to pull up here just a little bit. Once my G's start to go above two, I'm definitely going to have to bring the air brakes back in. Or at least one set. I can't keep the nose pulled up here. Waste heat's going back down. There's enough heat transfer, even though the heat coming over it is 11 billion degrees more than the radiators, probably. Wow, that's that's much fire. Yeah, it's a little hairy. Oh, no. That was too much negative angle attack there. That was, whew. So now we're getting high dynamic pressure. So if, if I tried to make any sort of big correction now, we would, we would lose lots of things. Jesus. Aerodynamic failure Jesus of something. Something just flew off. There's probably oh a streak on one of the wings. This is terrifying. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Oh it yeah, I saw off. that come off. It just what black was specks it? came off. I don't know. It was just a puff of black at the back of your engine. Maybe one of your spoilers? The right no, it's still there. Maybe uh landing gear? Oh. That would suck. Oh Jesus. Come on, baby, slow just, down. Woo! Just dump it in the ocean for a dip. Cool it right off. Okay. Except Kirp and Waters molasses. <laughs> Ooh, look at that effect. That is, uh, oh god, oh Jesus. Oh, God, look at those wing, the wing flex. That's just a little uh, worrying. Oh, as long as it doesn't look like the Boeing 787 wing flex, I think it'll be fine. <laughs> Bring out the other air brakes here, maybe. Okay, other air brakes are out. All the air brakes are out. We're slowing down pretty hard now. Got to get to a maneuver speed. Flight status nominal. All right. Let's bring up all the air brakes and begin to turn around. Slowly throttle up. We have power. Still above Mach 1. Do a very slow SR-71 style turnaround here. The blackbird is real. Now below Mach 1, trying to keep the angle of attack down. That was a little too much angle of attack there. We're not too far overshot. That's, we can still see everything. The 
So the assumption is if you turn on that nuclear engine right now and fly over uh, Kerbal Space Center, bad things happen? If people are inside? Yeah. No, well, I mean, it won't kill anyone inside the KSC, but if there's, like, a vessel nearby, no, like a it'll fry them. Yeah, something with a person. Yep. It's a joint between radio connector port Pooch. and and inner to do a wheel pod and radio connector port. Oh, okay. I have these little tiny connectors from uh, Kerbal Attachment System, and I have them stuck on just the gear pods, and those are the things that flew off, so. Okay. Whoever said gear was close. Me. <laughs> Grimes wins. Alright, let's throttle back up. Keep this altitude till we get closer to KSC. And then we'll bring it in for a nice gentle landing. And then I'm gonna go to bed. Oh wow, there's even gauges here with, uh, I don't know what that is. PRDP. Burderp. Burderp. Oxy. Fuel. Cabin light. Oh! Wow, he's happy. Back over Mach 1 already. Throttle her back all the way and start my descent. KSC Tower, this is Albatross 1, over. Hmm, they're not responding. Jesus, I'm still Mach 1. You know, I was really tempted there just to kind of set the uh, team speak to play whatever audio files I'm playing and just kind of go into DCS sound files, grab the ATC stuff. <laughs> Hog 1-1, one, one, hold position. Hog 1-1, one, one, hold, hold position. position. Hold position. Hold position. Hold position. Hog one one clear to taxi. Hey, position. where are you going? <laughs> hey, what are you doing? <laughs> there she is. Kerbal Space Center. Coming down very quickly. Time for the first set of air brakes.
gliding her on in. Still Mach point four. I'm gonna pop all the air brakes here for just a minute. Just a few seconds. Alright, bring those back in. First set of first stage of flaps. Loaded up the angle of attack there for a moment, but we're good. Time to bring the gear out. Second stage of flaps. Final stage of flaps. Holy crap. Oh god, push the nose forward, come on. <laughs> Jesus, look at that gear strain. Well, I'm down. A relatively soft touchdown. I probably on your successful flight. Probably will have to replace some of those tires. <laughs> Better than replacing the airplane. Oh Jesus! Oh God! Oh Jesus! Oh. We're a little butt heavy, it would seem. I'm gonna have to remember that for uh, few future alterations. And that's it. The first successful flight of the Albatross. Sweet. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time.